G'day folks, in this video I want to play you a clip from Joseph Prince, the famous Hyper Grace preacher. And in this clip, Joseph Prince says that when someone comes to Christ for salvation, there is no need for them to repent of their sin, to be sorrowful for their sin, or even to feel bad about their sin. They only need to believe. I want to examine Joseph Prince's teaching. First, I'll play you the clip, and then I want to go through the scriptures and see what the scripture says about repentance and godly sorrow. But first, here's the clip. Watch this. This is the ending part of Paul's sermon. And Paul says this, Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you cannot be justified by the law of Moses. We have discovered what Paul preached. It's as good as finding a CD of his sermon or an MP3 or a recording of his sermon. You know, we, we, we are hearing Paul preach the gospel to an audience who are not familiar with the gospel and we see what he deems important for them to hear. Amen. Number one, he says, through this man, Jesus Christ, is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. It's unqualified, unconditional. It's a proclamation of the offer of God, forgiveness of sins. And it's not a matter of like, like whether, it's, whether it's contingent on their repentance, whether it's contingent on their uh, behavior modification, whether it's conditioned on how sorrowful they are, how, how bad they feel, nothing to do with them. Notice what it says, through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. Now, some of us today will go to Paul back then and say, hey, Paul, you can't just say this. You got to tell them they got to repent. They got to, uh, you know, be really sorrowful in their heart and, and they really must turn around their ways. They must turn a new leaf. They must turn around to God. And, and you cannot just tell them, to you is preached the forgiveness of sins. How can you just offer them the forgiveness of sins? But Paul knew something we don't. Paul knew God is not looking at men anymore. He's looking at his son. It's not about the leper with all his sores. It is about the wonderful healer in all his glory. The focus is no more on the sinner. The focus is on Jesus. Amen. And what he went through for us right at the cross, in His death, burial, and resurrection. And now God offers, because of what He has done, God offers a free gift of the forgiveness of sins. To you, through this man, is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. It's only to be received. Now, when you receive that, God calls that repentance. Because you are saying, I cannot save myself. Amen? I cannot save myself from my sins. I cannot save myself from my judgment. I have no other way but to believe. He is the one. Amen. This is the way. Amen. And you believe on the gospel of Jesus Christ. You believe and receive the forgiveness of sins. What does that mean? You believe that you are forgiven of all your sins through Jesus Christ. That's the gospel Paul preached. So from that video clip, Joseph Prince clearly said that there is no need for repentance no need for godly sorrow over sin, and no need even to feel bad about your sin. That you can just come to Christ for salvation, believe that Jesus died on your cross. You don't have to be repentant. You don't have to have sorrow over your sin. You don't even need to feel bad about your sin. Just believe what's preached and you can be saved and go to heaven and be with God forever. I want to show you that that is actually in correct. First of all, Jesus preached repentance very strongly. In Mark chapter 1 verse 14 to 15, it says this, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So when Jesus preached the gospel, he preached that people should repent and believe the gospel. In fact, Jesus said, if you don't repent, you'll perish. Luke chapter 13, verse 3, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So according to Jesus, if you don't repent, you'll perish. 
But you might say, well, that was before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Let me read to you some more scriptures. Luke chapter 24, verse 45 to 47. And this is after the resurrection, just before the ascension of Christ. It says this, Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So Jesus told his disciples to preach repentance and the forgiveness of sins, not just the forgiveness of sins. That's why in Luke chapter 15, verse 3 to 7, it says this, And I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. The Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, that repentance comes from godly sorrow. It says this, For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. In fact, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to convict the world of sin so that they would believe upon Jesus Christ. It says in John chapter 16, verse 8 to 11, And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of the judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. The Holy Spirit comes into the world to convict the world of sin so that we would believe upon Jesus Christ. That's why the Holy Spirit was sent to convict us of our sin so that we might believe upon Jesus Christ. In fact, God also gave us the law so that we would believe upon Jesus Christ. It says in Galatians 3:24, therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. So according to Jesus, unless you repent, you'll perish. After the resurrection of Christ, Jesus sends his disciples into the world to preach repentance and the forgiveness of sins. He sends the Holy Spirit to convict the world of sin. The law convicts us of sin so that we would believe upon Jesus Christ. But let's keep looking at the scriptures. In fact, let's look at the teaching and the preaching of the Apostle Paul. Acts chapter 17 verse 30. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. In this passage, the Apostle Paul is telling the Gentile idolaters to repent of their idolatry. He says, God commands you to repent. That's the preaching of the Apostle Paul. But let's keep looking. Acts chapter 8, verse 22. Paul is telling Simon the sorcerer to repent of trying to buy the power of the Holy Spirit. He says this, Repent therefore of thy wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven. So Paul is telling Simon the sorcerer that he needs to repent of trying to buy the power of the Holy Spirit with money. But let's see what Paul himself says to King Agrippa about his preaching throughout the world. Acts chapter 26 verse 19 to 20. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent, turn to God and do works befitting of repentance. So it's very clear here that the Apostle Paul preached repentance to the Gentiles who were committing idolatry. He preached repentance to Simon the sorcerer when he wanted to buy the power of the Holy Spirit with money. And he also preached repentance in Damascus, Jerusalem, Judea, and the entire Gentile world and told people to produce fruit that is befitting of that repentance. In other words, to produce fruit to prove the genuineness 
of their repentance. It's very clear that Jesus and the Apostle Paul preached repentance and the forgiveness of sins, not just the forgiveness of sins. But let's look at the preaching of the Apostle Peter. In Acts chapter 2, verse 36 to 38, it says this, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 3 verse 19, the apostle Peter says this, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Christ even told the churches in Revelation to repent. Revelation chapter 2 verse 4 to 5, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. Revelation 3.19, and I throw this in to show you that preaching repentance is not unloving. It says this, as many as I love... I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So it's very clear that Jesus preached repentance and the forgiveness of sins. He says, unless you repent, you'll perish. He told his disciples to go into the world and preach repentance and the remission of sins. The Apostle Paul preached repentance everywhere he went. Not only that, the Apostle Peter preached repent and believe the gospel, and then you'll be forgiven. I would say this in conclusion, that it is only a repentant, sorrowful person who wants to be made right with God that will believe the gospel. No person will believe the gospel if they're not convicted of their sin, if they're not sorrowful over their sin, if they're not repentant over their sin, and they certainly won't believe if they have no desire to be made right with God. Only people that are convicted, repentant, sorrowful and desire to be made right with God will ever believe the gospel. Now, I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. If you disagree with me, I'll enjoy a conversation about this in the comments section. I'll see you in the comments section and you'll see me in my next video.